In this lesson, we are going to discuss projectiles launched at an angle. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to investigate the relationship between the angle of release and the height and range of the projectile and describe the horizontal and vertical motions of a projectile. Let us look at the scenario in which a person kicked the ball at a certain angle. On all locations of the ball at different times, its velocity is 2 meters per second. That's what we know from our previous discussion that the velocity along the x-axis is constant. Now, let's look at the velocity along the y component. We know that the velocity along the y axis changes at a uniform rate. But in this case, we need to consider different directions along the y axis. First, when the ball is kicked at an angle, it moves upwards. Suppose we have the following data. These data agree with our knowledge on the velocity along y. However, it decreases by 9.8 meters per second. This means that from the point of release up to the maximum height, the velocity decreases. This happens because the gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, is acting on the projectile. Once it reaches the maximum height, it will experience a temporary stop as stated by the 0 meter per second velocity. This means that at maximum height, the velocity is 0. Lastly, the projectile moves downward. These data show that the ball experienced a constant downward change in velocity, which is also equivalent to the acceleration due to gravity. This means that from the maximum height at the end point, the velocity along the y-axis increases. Let us now investigate how the angle of release would affect the distances it would cover for both horizontal and vertical components. We have the following angles of release for comparison. 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 75 degrees. From this, we can see that the projectile which was launched at 75 degrees is the highest, while the one launched at 15 degrees is the lowest. This means that as the angle of release nears to 90 degrees, the height of the projectile increases. Another important observation here is that the projectiles released at 75 degrees and 15 degrees had the same range of 8 units. This is also true for 60 degrees and 30 degrees which had a range of 9 units. By analyzing the pairs of angles of release, these angles add up to 90 degrees. We can now say that complementary angles have the same range. Lastly, we can see that the projectile which had the longest range is the one launched at 45 degrees, and that the projectiles which had the shortest range are the ones launched at 75 degrees and 15 degrees. In this case, it is not right to conclude that there is a direct or inverse relationship between the angle of release and range. Rather, Angles of release closer to 45 degrees have longer ranges. Since 60 degrees and 30 degrees are closer to 45 degrees, these angles would result to longer ranges compared to that of 75 degrees and 15 degrees. Now, let us analyze how we're going to determine the velocity and displacement of projectiles launched at an angle. To determine this, we need to look at the trigonometric functions. For this part, let us consider the trajectory for 45 degrees. From the angle of release, we can create a small triangle that would let us determine the velocity components of this projectile. Zooming into this triangle, we have theta or the angle of release. We can also see that it formed a right angle. The horizontal segment which was determined by the angle of release is the adjacent side. The vertical segment which is perpendicular to the adjacent side is what we call the opposite side. And lastly, the segment that connects the adjacent and opposite segments is the hypotenuse. This is the longest segment of the right triangle. The relationships of the three segments and the angle of release is described by Sokotoa. The first letters of each word in Sokotoa are the three trigonometric functions. S is for sine theta, C is for cosine theta, and T is for tangent theta. The next two letters of each word represent the ratio of the segments. Thus, SO means sine theta is equal to the opposite side over hypotenuse side. Ka means cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side over hypotenuse side. And lastly, Toa means tangent theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. To apply these functions in projectile motion, let us name the following segments according to the velocity components. This will be useful in calculating the initial velocity. Since the hypotenuse is the resultant segment, this will be v naught or the initial resultant velocity. Since the opposite side is the vertical side, this becomes the y component or the initial velocity at y. And lastly, since the adjacent side is the horizontal side, this becomes the initial velocity at x. 
Summarizing the relationship of these three variables, we have the formula for initial resultant velocity, which is written as v0 is equal to the square root of the initial velocity at x squared plus the initial velocity at y squared. However, there are cases in which either the horizontal or the vertical component does not have an actual value in the problem, and we need to determine the other component. This is where the trigonometric functions will be useful. First, suppose we need the initial horizontal velocity, but we do not have the value for the initial vertical velocity. Since only the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side are present, we will use cosine. Isolating the initial horizontal velocity, it will be equal to v0 times cosine theta. Second, we can determine the initial vertical velocity using the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Thus, we are going to use sine theta. Isolating the initial vertical velocity, we will have initial vertical velocity is equal to v0 times sine theta. These initial velocities can now be used in calculating the motion of projectiles launched at an angle. The formulas using projectiles launched horizontally are still applicable for projectiles launched at an angle. However, we need to include the angle of release in the formulas. Thus, we are going to use the initial velocities determined by the trigonometric functions. First, for displacement along x, the initial velocity along x is equal to v0 cosine theta. Thus, we have r is equal to v0 times cosine theta times time. The same applies to the velocity equation. Thus, we have v sub x is equal to v0 times cosine theta. Second, for displacement along y, the initial velocity along y is equal to v0 times sine theta. Thus, we have h is equal to h0 plus v0 times sine theta times time plus one half of gravity times time squared. The same applies to the velocity equation. Thus, we have v sub y is equal to v0 times sine theta plus gravity times time. These four equations can be used for projectiles launched horizontally even if these contain an angle of release. Finally, it is better to use these formulas for the two types of projectile motion. For projectiles launched at an angle, just use the angle of release in theta. For projectiles launched horizontally, just use zero as the angle of release for theta since zero means a horizontal launch of a projectile. To summarize this lesson, let us review the following key points. Constant velocity and acceleration are experienced on the horizontal and vertical components respectively. Angles of release closer to 90 degrees result to higher maximum heights. Angles of release closer to 45 degrees result to longer ranges. Complementary angles have the same range. And lastly, trigonometric functions are used to calculate projectiles launched at an angle. And that ends our discussion on projectiles launched at an angle.